Ah, so a quick one. Um, as an after dropped you off, went to Sainsbury's because mother wanted two onion and chive uh, cottage cheese tubs at one forty a tub. Um, had a cheeky look. There was like Rocky Horror Show for a quid. Was it two quid? This is a piss poor selection at one pound and two pound. But um, I, I think I saw this last year. The uh, uh, Judy Jarvis and company were pushing the haunting of Margam Castle. Apparently, best the true story. And like like you, I mean, I can see what you what you were thinking. Like you said, with the haunting of Bolly Rectory, I think by the same team, it. Uh, the cover was fantastic it looked the part the description obviously everyone most people know about Borley Rectory and God knows I've seen various takes on the Borley Rectory story some totally fictitious and some part fiction part thingy. Um, so I took a punt on this one one of the deciding factors was uh, the price, three quid. If it had been six quid, I'd have been wary. Um, but on my initial run uh, by the DVD area at Scunthorpe Sainsbury's, I um, looked at it, but I put it back. So I went around Sainsbury's, got a bottle of you know a two litre Coke because it was um, on offer at one fifty zero sugar. Two tubs for my mother. And I and I am denied about it, so I went I went back. And I picked it up. I could I could see that um when I checked online there's actually Judy Jab, so Judy Matheson was in it. Caroline Munro and Judy Jarvis, Callum Rowe, Jane Merrill, and I recognised Darren Nesbitt. Like I said, I did have for a long time the special branch box set. Um, so, you know, I got it before I get it a go. Even though the IMDb rating is 2.6 out of 10. Uh, gets back and uh, obviously I watched it it looks you know um, I said on the whole very professionally shot we still had a few gripes with occasional shaky camera work and in fact that when someone gets shot there's no blood or gore or anything like that there's zero special effects uh the ghosts look like humans would expect them to look like three three heads and eyes hanging out you know the ghosts in ghost ship look almost human for fuck's sake and for a film which was had a limited shooting schedule, you know, he didn't have time to piss about. He had to crack on with job. So it kind of starts. Uh, 
uh, with this uh, parapsychology research unit at this uh, university being threatened with having their funding cut if they don't have that um, humdinger of a story that they can attach their name to. So faced with either if you're prepared for your department to have a big cut, I suggest you take your team and go to this castle in Wales, uh, uh, Margram Castle, Margram Castle. Um, it's probably one of the most haunted places. Otherwise, you know, you'll have your budget uh, severely snipped off. So they're kind of like put in a position where they, they have to go. And someone, one of the grappy reviews, you know, we see some short stock footage of planes flying and cars in the motorway, blah, blah, blah. So what? It's only a little bit of tiny amount of stock footage to try and set up the premise that they are flying from America to England and travelling the motorway on the way to Wales. It's not. It's a very small amount of footage. Sometimes you've got to do uh, with the budget you've got. And, you know, one of the first scenes we see properly is this lovely country pub I'm guessing it was shot at that bit in Wales and uh, and this is where we see a cam two cameos so they're not even really supporting artists uh, it's probably maybe a, a couple of days they might have been there maybe not even maybe, maybe a day shooting but the uh, Caroline Munro who plays the pub pub landlord and Judy Matheson or Judy Jarvis plays um, you know, have a customer, a psychic customer or something who warns them to not not to go to uh, Margam, Margam Castle. And this put for a short while and they set off and then this creepy bloke, a character called Enos, suppose that the caretaker or something. He lets them in and then says, I'll see you tomorrow, book us off. They are joined by uh, Darren Nesbitt um, and Jane Merrow. You know, Hands of the Ripper and um, Night of the Big Heat. And they join the team, you know, give a backstory to the place, and there's some black and white flashback sequences ex explaining how the gamekeeper husband was a bit of a bully a bit of an asshole the wife snapped from the pressure and strain killed the child and then killed herself i'm not sure if the gamekeeper got killed him as well so the hauntings i think are by them and there's rumors of this satanic book which could break the curse and that the, sp the, sp the spirits that haunt the place will do anything to stop them getting this book get getting access to this secret chamber um, one of them gets killed with an axe by the gamekeeper um, English chap but he bloody very good American accent. Jason Parry, I think, or Parry. That's his name. Never heard of him before, but I see he's very, very good actor. Very well acted. And his American accent is almost flawless. In fact, if all of them are English, there's a few that play the American side that do a... I want to say it would be a perfect American accent, but... It's very good, and it's maintained. There's some more scenes where 
Jay Mero and Darren Nesbitt appear to be uh, being held for a trial and well, in the woods, a trial execution by a flashback. Apparently, it's a prayer when the actual castle was built by the witch spanner general um, and his helper. Apparently, this Simon Bamford, he played one of the um, demonic monsters from the Hellraiser series. Uh, a cameo by him. And then it's revealed that it was psychological. Um, they're actually within the confines of the castle. Which was, it's not a proper castle as such. It was built in the 1800s. Otherwise it would be Castle Margam, not Margam Castle. Um, built for someone called Fox Talbot or something. Um, eventually they locate this book or they come across this book and Darren Nesbitt says oh that this is the blah 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 book it's it's one of the most revered and legendary occult satanic books this one could break the spell the cursed put an end to the haunting he recites from it and then next thing this Enos character turns up and obviously the surviving members of the American parasite parasite Jesus parapsychology the ghost hunters um, and Jane Morrow and his Darren Nesbitt they sake. they um, follow this Enos around he goes from room to room finding the first person that was killed and the next person and he's not answering them, he's not saying anything and then Enos goes into the basement um, which we see three bodies on the floor I didn't quite get it at first but it does look like the bodies of the spirits that were haunting the place, the gamekeeper, and I guess and his wife and the murdered child, are found on the floor, obviously long dead, and I think that's unless I can see the point is um, until I can see a Wikipedia page which explains the plot. I kind of got an idea of the plot. Uh, it's for me, it's the ending. Because when that Darren Nesbitt quotes from this revered book, and I'm guessing breaks the spell, breaks the curse, stops the haunting. Because all of a sudden, this um, this recording, I think it might be Joseph Locke, which was played earlier on in the film, appears, and then we see the camera pan through the place. And then, obviously, drone shots showing the aerial view of this, what some people describe as like a a gargantuan-sized building, a monstrosity to some people. So you see the camera going around the place and then a slow drone shot showing the top-down view so you can see the roof, you can see the grounds looking down. And and then the credits come on. So I'm guessing the three bodies at the very end, although this, when, it's, when it's Enos, like I said, does does reappear in the final scene, he doesn't say anything despite being pursued by say the surviving parapsycho parapsychological team, um, and Jay Morrow and this Darren Nesbitt pursuing him, asking him what the hell's going on. What's all this about? And the, but this Enos was a very old actor. I don't know his name offhand. He say he doesn't utter a word. And then he walks that shot, and then the music starts, and then obviously we do see a, a kind of an angled view of three bodies, which I said 
said two minutes ago, I'm suspecting is the gamekeeper from the flashback, his wife who killed herself in his bathtub, prior to that murdered a child. You don't see it, but you heard the child scream because she snapped from the strain. But the, you know, the gamekeeper being a bit of a bully. So if that's what that final sequence is, when that Enos looks down and everyone else sees these three bodies of the gamekeeper, the wife and the child, that they're... the curse has been broken. So despite some, despite a very, 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 very low rating on IMDb, say 2.6, I'm guessing the Rotten Tomatoes rating would be kind of in that ballpark. And some smart ass critic on the Google results saying, you know, occasional shaky camera work and the stock footage of the aircraft flying and the cars on the motorway that's it when you've got a, a modest budget and a tight shoot tight shooting schedule you've got to somehow you know sort it out aren't you so overall I would say um, it's a definite improvement on the Haunted and Ball Directory and at half the price. I think for the, for the people alone, even though it's only a cameo by Judy Jarvis, it's only a cameo by Caroline Munro. Um, a very good supporting roles by Darren Nesbitt and Jane Merrow. And the young, I think mainly English cast, especially the ones who maintain the American accent throughout, even the ones that get killed off. I would say it's it's three quid well spent. I say I'd give it six and a half to six point five to six point eight. Um well well over double what uh, the ratings on IMDB are. And I would say yeah, I'll get it. It's like I say, it's done on a, on a modest budget. It's 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 straight to DVD. Um, but to say it's one of them, it there is a backstory. Say so that's explained in the flashback, the bullying, evil, nasty. Hang on, I think. There's a flashback sequence which the bullying, tormenting gamekeeper was often seen walking around with an axe and a gun. I think he meets a poach in the woods or something, there's a bit of a fight and he accidentally gets killed. So his wife didn't kill the gamekeeper, but he was apparently a bit of, a bit of a nasty pasty. But because she was bullied and harassed and thingy, she snapped, had a total breakdown, killed the child and then killed herself in the bath. But their spirits come back to haunt the place and the grounds. So yeah. Here, end of the recording for tonight. I'm going to finish up watching Silent Hill Revelation.